On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some of the people said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Galilee? Has not the Scripture said that the Christ is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So there was a division among the people over him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers then went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, Why did you not bring him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. The Pharisees answered them, Are you led astray, you also? Have any of the authorities or the, of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd who do not know the law are accursed. Nicodemus, who had gone to him before and who was one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search, and you will see that no prophet is to rise from Galilee. And Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. And according to John, Holy Gospel, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow, flow rivers of living water. Today is Sunday of Pentecost, Pentecost the church 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord, of our Lord, from the dead, and ten days after the ascension to heaven, celebrates the descent of Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy, undivided and life-giving Trinity, came to the world. This event took place in accordance with the promise of the Lord to apostles prior to his departure from the world. The Lord spoke to the apostles of the coming of the other paraclete, that is the coming of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, there is a prefig prefiguring of the third person of the Holy Trinity a number of times and at various events. What is the pillar of light which led the Israelites in the desert for 40 odd years so that they could reach the promised land without hesitation? the illumination of the 70 men assisting Moses, who he elected following the divine instruction, was also the action of the Spirit of God. Beyond this, all the prophets who inspired by the Holy Spirit. For this reason, the church signs, sings as follows. In the teaching of the prophets, you announce it to us the way of salvation. Additionally, in the prophets, Eoil, Joel, we read as follows. After this, it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall, be, shall see visions. In the New Testament, we have the presence of the Holy Spirit more apparent and more emphatically. For instance, at the baptism of the Lord in the River Jordan, Evangelist Luke writes, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily from like a dove upon him. Beyond this, we have the presence of the Holy Spirit at the transfiguration of the Lord in the Mount Tavo. Matthew the Evangelist recalls, behold a bright cloud Oversouded them. The ecclesiastical hymn proclaims, "In the apostles of our, in the apostles, our Savior shown the grace of your Spirit." 
in the Acts of the Apostles, Luke, the Evangelist, narrating the event of the descent of the Holy Spirit, refers to the preaching of Peter and records of the first 3,000 people who believed at that day of the Pentecost. On this day, the most holy trinity, our attention is drawn to the historical event which occurred on the day of the Pentecost. The descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciples 50 days after the resurrection of Christ so that by gradual increase and progress from glory to glory the light of Trinity might shine upon the more illuminated as Gregorian Naziozin stated. However, it will be wrong to view it only it is isolated way and fail to recognize that this effect has been felt over the centuries and still being ex experienced today. This is expressed in the prayer of the Holy Spirit, which often occurs at the beginnings of service. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, you are present everywhere and fill all things. O he Treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from all impurity, and O God, one, save our souls. It is the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. A seal and gift together bring an in indictable impress as something given which contains special qualities. In the case of the Holy Apostles on the day of the Pentecost, this meant receiving the impress of the Christ promised in the Holy Spirit and the gifts that accompany and in, in thy will and presence. Behold, I am setting the promise of my Father upon you, but wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from, from on high. We are uh, reminded in the Contagion and Stichira of today, we think that this was not an event to bring confusion. Like in the days of old, of old pride brought confusion of tongues to the builders of the Tower of Babel. But now the, di the diversity of tongues enlightened the minds and gave knowledge of the glory of God. Or then the contrary, the descending power of the Holy Spirit brought clarity, understanding, and variety of gifts to enable the Holy Apostles to fulfill the commission given them by our Lord Jesus Christ. A seal authenticates, be it on a legal document, letter, or deed, in the way that seal of the archetypes at the bottom of the document confirms its origin and validates its content. In this way, can we affirm that the annotating with the blessed oil in the mystery of chrismation confirms an indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the gift bestowed by this presence. In this is on the on then we can claim that the historical event of the day of Pentecost finds itself repeated to those who become one with Christ through the holy baptism, chrismation, and the holy communion. After life itself, these are the first gifts offered by God and by which those who accept are each enabled to carry out their own individual apostolic witness, each with his own capability and special gifts. Nobody is uh, over in church. Every single person is a person, not an individual that the new world likes to put as individuals. We are persons, and we have special gifts, which is the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit is, is unique and uh, is various. But each of us taking and uh, accommodating these gifts according to our character. For this is every, everybody, everybody of us have a special gifts. Maybe you don't know yet. We don't know yet. This is effectively the gift of salvation, a gift which in the joy of this day, we nevertheless should remember we are advised, even warned in the letter of the Hebrews, we should 
not neglect. Apostle Paul elsewhere also commands us to remember that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, in accordance in Corinthians epistles. From the day of the Pentecostese onwards, the action of the Holy Spirit becomes more obvious and more apparent. This happens both to apostles and their successors are receivers and transmitters of the charismata of the Holy Spirit, the same occurs to the rest of the members of the church who enjoy the many gifts of the third person of the Holy Trinity. The church is permanently led toward to the whole truth and the church we are all. The church is not the temple. This is stones. The church is all that is baptized. This is the church. In accordance with the uh, with uh, orthodox teaching, the Holy Spirit provides every gift. He inspires prophecy, perfects the priesthood, grants wisdom to illiterate, illiterate, makes simple fishermen to become wise theologians, and establish perfect order in the organization of the church, where, wherefore, O Comforter, equal in nature and majesty with the Father and the Son. After the liturgy today, the great whispers with a kneeling, kneeling prayers takes place, leading us to Monday, which is called the Day of the Holy Spirit, tomorrow. Just as in every liturgy, God is asking that the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, ending with the words, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. So may this day of Pentecost be for us all a day of thanksgiving, of change and encouragement in our faith by the presence of the heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who is everywhere present and fill all things. Amen.